this video, we're going to go back to doing some graphing. But this time we're going to be doing graphing of radical functions. So to begin with, I just want to make a table, because that's always the best way to graph something you don't know how to graph. So let's choose some x and uh, values to substitute in. Um, if we substitute negative values in for x, we're going to get non-real values. And we can't graph non-real values. So I'm going to say that negative values shouldn't be in our domain. We shouldn't be substituting them in for x. So I'm going to start with 0. That would be our smallest. So the square root of 0 is 0. Square root of 1 would be 1. Uh, 2 is the square root of 2. And I'm just going to put a little approximation here. We should know that that's 1.4. 3 would get you the square root of 3, which again, you should know this approximation is 1.7. And then we get to the square root of 4, but since 4 is a perfect square, we know that that's exactly 2. I'm just going to finish the rest of my table with some more perfect squares here. So 9, the square root, would be... 3, the next one would be 16 to get us 4, and so on. So I'm going to graph these values. So we have a point at 0, 0, 1, 1, uh, 4, 2, and 9, 3. Right, and you could put the, uh, the root 2 and root 3 on here as an approximation. But you'll notice that this is the first graph that we've made that when we connect these values we are only going to put an arrow in one direction and that, like I said that's because the domain of the square root of x function is only from 0 to infinity and notice I included the 0 there which then gives us a range of the same thing, 0 to infinity. So now that we know the basic shape of a square root graph, let's play around. Let's do um, an equation where it is shifted in multiple directions. So here's our function. And notice that this has three translations. Our first translation I would like to start with this here, our inside, the square root, which is moving the graph left 1. Then I like to do any type of stretching. So this is a vertical stretch, uh, factor of 2, right? which just pulls this graph in a vertical direction. In other words, takes those y values and multiplies them by 2. And then the minus 4 right here, we should know that that's going to move the graph down 4. So I'm going to take the graph that I just made, and I'm going to shift it. Left 1. Okay, so let's start with the point 0, 0. Okay, so we were here at 0, 0. Let's move it left 1. Now we're at negative 1, 0. If we multiply that value, that y value, by 2, we're not going to change anything, because our y value at this point right here is 0, okay, and then down 4. So we should be at negative 1, negative 4. Okay. The next point was at 1, 1, right here. So we're just going to repeat those steps again. Move left 1. Notice I'm at the point 0, 1. Let's take our y value, multiply it by 2. We get 2. One more shift is our 4 down. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it looks like I'm at 0, negative 2. Next step. Oops. Let's take the point we had at 4, 2, left 1. 
Let's stretch this by a factor of 2. So our y value is 2. Getting multiplied by 2 brings us to 4. And down 4 brings us to 3, comma 0. So I think that's enough for us to draw our graph right here. And notice that the order I did my translations was the left, or in this case, you know, we, we did left, but we could have done right. That was our first translation. The second was the vertical stretch. And the third was the up-down. And that's just because of the order of operations, right? If we were to substitute a value in for x, that's the exact order in which we'd have, we would have done this. We would have added 1. We then would have taken the square root, then multiplied by 2, then subtracted the 4. Right? So we could answer questions about domain and range, increasing, decreasing, the x-intercepts, the, the zeros, the y-intercepts, um, all that stuff we could do. But I'd rather do a more interesting radical function. Let's turn to the back. Now this is a little different because you'll notice that inside of the radical is not just x plus or minus something, it's actually 16x minus 32. So what you'd like to do is not have that 16 there. That 16 is making this a little strange. So instead of leaving it there, I would like to factor out a 16 from that expression. Right? So 16x and minus 32 and 16 times the quantity of x minus 2, they're really the same thing. So I'm going to change my function here to y equals negative square root oops, 16 times x minus 2 inside of there plus 1. Now remember, we can now split up this radical into the negative square root of 16 times the square root of x minus 2 plus 1. And we know what the square root of 16 is, so now this becomes negative 4, the square root of x minus 2, and then the plus 1 on the outside there. So now, we have a function that looks more familiar to us. Let's list our translations. The first one, we know that this is being moved to the right 2 from that x minus 2. Second, we're having a vertical shift, oh, sorry, a vertical stretch, a vertical stretch factor of 4 along with a reflection, because since it is a negative 4, so we're going to reflect over the x-axis. But remember, if you just multiply by negative 4, it's going to do that reflecting for you. So really, these two can be done together. And then our fourth step is going to be to move it up 1. Okay. So again, we're going to start with our point at 0, 0. Here we go. Right 2, 1, 2. Vertical stretch. Um, and the reflection isn't going to change a value of 0. And up 1, here we are at 2, 1. Okay, next point was at 1, 1. Right 2, 1, 2. Vertical stretch. And the reflection, so I'm going to take this y value at 1 and multiply by negative 4. So I'm at negative 4 and move up 1. So now I'm at 3, negative 3. Let's do one more point. The next point we had was at 4, 2. Let's move it right 2. y value gets multiplied by negative 4, so now we're at negative 8. And up 1 means we're at 6, negative 7. Ooh, so this graph is decreasing, as we would have predicted from seeing that reflection. And it really was no different, even though we had, remember this, the important part about this graph, right here, we had a 16x inside of there. We need to take care of that. One other thing we want to do 
If we're doing a chapter on radicals, we want to look at things besides square roots. So let's try making a table for a cube root. And then once you've seen this, remember that you can shift a graph, any type of graph, using those same rules. So as long as we know what the basic cube root graph looks like, we're golden. So let's make a table. Again, a table is always a great way to make a, a graph of something you've never seen before. Um, let's see, for the x values, I now can substitute in negative values because we can cube root negatives. Um, I'll do negative 8 because I know that's a cube. Um, the, the cube root of negative 8 would be negative 2. What's another cube? Um, 1. 1 is a cube, so we could do negative 1 to get negative 1. We could do 0 to get 0. We could do the positive values, right? Now we could do 1 gets us 1, and 8 gets us 2. So let's graph those. So negative 8, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 8, 2. So this looks very similar, this portion right here, to a square root. Um, it looks maybe that somebody stretched it horizontally. Um, but now it has this symmetry to it. It looks like it has one in the negative direction as well. So that's what our cube root graph is going to look like. Remember, I can ask you all things about these graphs, like domain range, increasing, decreasing. Um, but now you should know how to graph anything.